Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here. We are still working our way through Make Code Arcade extensions. If you are new to this channel, we build video games. I have an entire series that'll show you how to do that. You should definitely check it out if you don't know how. Now we are working through a series on Make Code Arcade extensions. Today we're looking at one of my personal favorites, Arcade Text. So the program I have open behind me right now is the tile map program that we made a while back in one of the lesson videos. And I think we came back to it once or twice to add animations or what have you. But this is a simple game where we walk around. We first built this when we were looking at tile maps and making them larger than the size of screen. And then we added this interactivity where we could touch one of these treasure chests. It would open up and it would give us a score, which you can see right here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to change things up, make it a little bit more professional. Instead of just showing us points in the top right corner, using the pre-existing score, um, the pre-existing variable score that they give us, we're going to create text that updates as we're collecting treasure. It's going to make our game look more professional, and we get to design it ourselves, which is a nice addition, right? So let's get started with that. The extensions you will find down here in the extension section, and we're looking for the one that's called Arcade Text. This is one of my personal favorite extensions. I love, love, love this extension. It is literally, in my opinion, a game changer. Um, and here's why. I'm going to go ahead and download it. Up until now, everything that we've done with text, we have done with... Try to see if I remember where it is. Oh, yeah, the game section. Up until now, everything we've done with text, we have done with either the splash block, which works great for titles and things like that. It just creates a small text in the middle of the screen. Or we've done it with these larger uh, dialogues, the long text, right? Or we can design a frame and give text in the middle of the screen, which is a larger text for things like paragraphs. Usually we would use the long text for stories, introducing the game, or maybe instructions on how to play, right? So up until now, everything we've done with text has either been small text in a splash block or large text in a long text block. With arcade text, you can do anything just about. Here, let me show you an example. I already have it open in another tab here. This is a game that I made a couple years back. Um, I decided to make my own version of Pong, but instead of making a two-player game, I made it against an AI. It took me some time to get the AI working correctly, a lot of conditions involved, but this is my Pong game. So at the beginning here, this is an example of a splash block, right? Where we have a little bit of text in the middle of the screen, it's introducing the game and it also gives me credit. You can only have two lines in a splash block. So anything bigger than that wouldn't look good in a splash block. And then this is an example of long text, right? So I, I'm kind of setting up the premise of the game. Can you beat my genius AI? And I tell how the points work and so on and so forth, right? So that's the stuff we already know if you took the lessons with me, all the basics. But once we get into the game, you're gonna see text used in a different way. So here we're still using splash blocks here. So we have in the middle of the screen where it says level one and then it says zero, zero. So these are the two players scores. So I'm the red player and I have one point right now. Blue player has zero. I now have two points because I'm doing much better than the AI. This is after all only level one. I built this game to have multiple levels and it does get harder as you play. Um, I would definitely recommend you try it out. If you want to, I'll put a link in the description of this video. So the text is updating the scores. You'll notice there's no score in the top, like we're used to when we use the regular um, score variable, the pre-made score variable that appears in the corners, right? So player one's score would normally appear right here, and player two's score would normally appear over here. But instead, I put the scores in the middle, and I did that using the arcade text extension, which I'm going to show you how to use in a minute. Then down here at the bottom where it says speed of shot, this is also updating with every goal. It's saying the speed of the shot. And I added that and just kind of a fun little thing because as you play the game, the ball does start to move faster. You get some faster speeds. And it's kind of fun to see how fast you knock the ball into your opponent's uh, goal. So that is an example of how I used Arcade Text. In the last video that I made, when we were talking about uh, what were we talking about in the last video? Oh, yeah, we were talking about timers. In that video, I showed you my Lander Commander game that also uses arcade text. In that one, the text appears in the corners and it tells you the speed that you're falling at, into Mars and how much gas you have, how much fuel you have left and things like that, right? 
So it's giving you stats for the player um, while you're playing. This is why I love arcade text, because it allows you the freedom to use text however you want to. You're not limited to the little splash bar in the middle or the big boxes for dialogue. You can put text anywhere you want to in your game. You can have it update however you want to in your game. So let's go ahead and start using it. Let's go back to the tile map program. All right, so here we are. We downloaded arcade text and it appears right here as text sprite is where it appears. Once we click on it, there are not a lot of blocks here. So again, this is a fairly easy one to use. The first block is what creates the text sprite. So here's the big idea I want you to understand as far as what this is doing. This is literally creating a text in the form of a sprite. So that means that all these blocks up here that we can normally do with sprites, which are just pictures, right? All these blocks that we can do with sprites, we can also do with text. So we create a text sprite. And then after that, if we want to, we can set its position. We could change its X, its Y, we could change its scale. We could change all sorts of stuff about it. Anything you can normally do with a sprite, you can now do with text, which really gives you so much creative freedom as the programmer here. So what I'm gonna do is for this game right now, it keeps track of the points for the treasure chests using the normal score block. I'm going to replace that. And what I wanna do is I wanna create some text that actually says treasure chests found, and then it has a number that updates each time. That's what I'm gonna do. So instead of using the score, we're gonna create our own little text that keeps track of the treasure chests. So to do that, I first need to create the text sprite. It doesn't really matter where I put this in the on start. Um, I think I, I will put it after the tile maps. That way when I set the position, you know, it won't be a problem. I can base it on the tile map maybe if I want to. All right, so since I'm only using the one text sprite, I don't really have to worry about renaming it. But if I did have several, like in the games that I showed you, I use text sprite in more than one place, you might want to name each one just to keep track of what they do, right? So in this case, it's going to keep track of the treasure found. So the text sprite is going to say, treasure found, and I'm going to put zero at the beginning of the game because we haven't found any yet, right? So that's what it's going to say. And there is the text right there. You can already see it appearing right there in the middle of my tile map because I haven't set its position yet. So that's where it is right now. All right, so let's go back to the text sprite section. And here we have some options. We can change the size of the font. In this case, I actually kind of like that size. So I'm not worried about the, the font size. You can give it an outline and you can also give it a border, which is kind of cool. So just to show you what that looks like, let's just grab a couple of these right quick here. So there we go. It has an outline now and it has a border, right? So if you wanted it to look pretty official looking, you could do that stuff. I actually really like the outline. The border doesn't mean much to me. You can also change the, uh, the border a little bit here with a padding. I'm not sure what padding does. Let's give it a padding. Let's give it a padding of one. Does it make it wider? Yeah, I think it, I think it made a bigger gap between the text and the border. Let's make it bigger. Let's make it five. See if I'm right about that. Yeah, you see how much bigger a distance there is around it. So that's actually kind of cool. I don't, I don't hate that. I don't hate that at all, but I don't need it for this game. So let's get rid of that one. So we can create an outline. We can create a border. The numbers that you'll notice here is the thickness, right? So a border of one looks pretty good if you're going to have small text. If you're going to go with bigger text, maybe you want to go with a bigger border, but I definitely wouldn't go bigger than one with small text like this. All right. Then down here, this block sets the text. So this one is definitely going to come in handy for us later. If you want the text to change in game, this is the block that you would use, right? So in the game that I showed you, the score was updating. And we did that by changing it with this. Basically, this block works the same way as in the sprite block we have set image to, right? So with this set image to block, I can change the image of a sprite with the set text block here, set text sprite text, it allows me to change the text inside of the sprite, right? So I can do this at any time that I want the text to change or update. 
All right, and then down here we have an icon. This one's kind of cool. So let's look at this real quick. With the icon, I can add an image to my text, which is kind of neat. So I don't see any treasure chest here. It'd be cool if there was a treasure chest one. Oh, there it is at the bottom. So we'll put that there. So now it has an icon. So let's take a look at what it looks like now. There it is. So this treasure chest right here is not actually part of the game. It's the icon next to the text. So you don't have to add an icon to your text, but you can. And that's kind of cool if you, you know, if you're trying to signify something in particular, like maybe enemies killed. So you might have a picture of an enemy or something like that. So that's kind of neat. All right. Anything else here? No, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and talk about how to update it now. So as I mentioned, I want to replace the score with this text. So down here where I have changed score by one, we're going to delete that. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create our own variable to keep track of the treasure. So I'm going to go to variables and I'm going to make a new variable, which I'm just going to call treasure. At the beginning of the game, treasure equals zero because he hasn't found any yet, right? Then in here, when you overlap with it and you get the treasure, we're going to change treasure by one so that it adds one to it. And then I want to change the text. So I'm going to grab this set text bright text. And we're going to do just like we did before. Treasure found. Now here's where I need it to add the number, right? So I actually can't do that the way it currently is because I need to put the variable in there. So what I need to do is go down here to advanced and grab the text join block. So join blocks allow you to put different things together inside of a text format. So I actually need to put that here and the first bubble is going to say treasure found. And I'm gonna put the semicolon. I'm also going to add my space here because if I don't put a space, it won't appear in the game. And then where it says world there, I'm going to replace that with the variable that I made treasure. So now whenever I pick up a treasure item, the variable treasure will increase by one and the text sprite will change to treasure found space because I put a space in there and then it will show the number. So right now, let's take a look at it and see if it works. So right now it says treasure found zero. Let's go find one. There it goes. You see how it automatically updated? Now it says treasure found one, treasure found two, treasure found three, treasure found four, and it is updating. Now, I could theoretically just leave that here in that part of the map if I wanted to, or I could move it. Because remember, anything you can do with normal sprites, you can do with a text sprite. And that's the great thing about this extension. So I could set its position in the XY. I could even use the scene blocks and use the tile map and set it to a particular tile on the tile map, but I'm not going to do that. I could. I have seen games before where they'll keep stuff like this in the bottom of the map. So if I want to see if I got all the treasure chests, I come down here and then I would see the text like down here in the corner, right? So I could move it down there. But what I usually do for most of my games is I like to have the text actually part of the screen. So this would actually stay in one of the corners of the screen, maybe the top left corner, maybe the bottom right, maybe the bottom right, maybe the bottom left. I would just have to kind of pick my corner. But what I like to do is have the text appear there and stay there. So to do that, I actually need it to update with the camera. And we saw this a little bit when we did our um, mini map extension we put the mini map in the corner of the game when we moved it moved with the player same thing here i'm going to do that same thing now if i remember correctly in the mini map we decided to do it with game update one millisecond and it worked really well so i'm going to do that same thing with this one so on game update every one millisecond i want to set the position of the text sprite because that was the name of it and i'm going to make it related to the camera's position. So keep in mind, the camera is always in the middle of the screen. So we need to move it in relation to that. So if I want it to be in the top left corner, let's just say we're going to do top left for now. I need to figure out how many pixels to the left to move it and how many pixels up to move it. So to move the X to the left, I have to subtract it by a certain number. 
So we need to figure out how far to move it. So it's always on the left side of the screen. And then to move it up, we need to subtract its Y. So a little bit of guess and check here to figure it out. So right now they're both set to zero. So it's gonna be in the center of the screen. So as I'm walking around, it's staying in the center, but I need to figure out how far to the left and how far up to move it. So let's try 20 pixels to the left, maybe. That's not bad. And how high up? The whole thing is 120. I'm gonna say 50. That's not bad. I could probably go a little bit higher. Maybe 52. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's right there in the corner. So now as I walk around my game, you guys see that that stays in the top left corner of my game. Now, of course, I could put it in whatever part of the screen I wanted to. I just picked top left for this example. So I actually like this. This is a good starter for that. And I could also add a lot more text in other ways. Really, the way you use text in your game is completely up to you. You could have it as a decoration. It doesn't have to be something that updates. Maybe you put a store in your game and you want there to be text above the store that says shop. You could just put in there as a text sprite. Pretty neat stuff. Okay, so we will go ahead and end this video here. I think I've shown you enough to where you can start using text, um, arcade text on your own. If you do build something with arcade text, I would love to see it. So please, once you've finished building your program, click on that share button, copy link, and put it in the comments. If you learned something new in this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about this channel so that they can come build fun games too. We have a lot more extensions to cover, so I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.